Friends, comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome to the third episode of my Transport Fever campaign uh, playthrough. We are now moving on to the second uh, American mission here. I still haven't gone any further from the last time in terms of my own playthrough, so I'm still on the sixth one. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to make sure that I stay ahead on. Anyway, the next one is industrialization. So I'll let the gentleman here, my assistant, explain the facts to you. Steel, that's the stuff progress is forged from. Everything is possible. In Pittsburgh, the steel industry metropolis, the furnaces are running at full blast. Steel production is opening up new prospects for the construction of buildings, for the production of machines, and, last but not least, for railroads too. People are flocking to the city, and there's work here aplenty. Bright minds are working meticulously on inventions and new technologies. They've been experimenting with a new form of power called electricity for decades now, but the breakthrough now seems to be within reach. Perhaps even large machines will soon be powered by electrical forces. A new age is dawn. He who takes his chances now can expect a golden future. Okay, so we survived the uh, transcontinental uh, business venture there, and we came through with enough money to now expand into the eastern part of the USA. So as you can see last time again, I only managed to meet three medals on my own, so this time we'll see if we can do better. Uh, the ones that I missed were the turning point in the war of currents. We have to convince all districts uh, of the benefits of alternating current by the year 1890. So very important to keep these uh, milestones in mind. Also, I didn't inundate Tesla with enough coal. So that's something I must uh, pay attention to, to see everything else. All right, so we just have to focus on that. But it should be easy enough. I did it last time. So this time we're going into the steel business. And I'll just let uh, the gentleman explain to us again. Pittsburgh, 1880, the stronghold of world steel production. The perfect time to invest in the steel and mechanical engineering industries. This will guarantee that our company always has the best iron horses in its stable. Our friend George Westinghouse, who revolutionized rail transport with the invention of the air brake, conducts his business from the town of Monroeville, where he is researching electricity. He's offering us a stake in his company in return for us helping him to get ahead of his closest competitors and achieve a breakthrough for his alternating current system. Excellent. So there you can see again we are following history. And that's what I love about any campaign that... Uh, actually is based on historical events and gets the player involved in them because you actually get an interest in these things and you start to learn about Westinghouse and the start of the uh, alternating current system and about the sort of struggles that were happening there between Westinghouse and Tesla and uh, Edison on the other hand. So very interesting. Uh, anyway, so the main focus is on our friend George Westinghouse, so we do have some powerful friends since we are now a successful railroad company. And of course we will branch out into the other uh, forms of transport. But anyway, so George Westinghouse wants our help here and he wants us to connect Pittsburgh here to his hometown of Monroeville. So let's start and see what we must do. George Westinghouse is convinced of the superiority of alternating current and wants to produce all manner of lighting equipment and motors in his newly built factory. Only the Westinghouse plants are not very accessible. A direct railroad connection between the city and the town of Monroeville would make things considerably easier. The workers wouldn't already be tired from the walk when they turn up for their shifts at the factory. Okay, awesome. So the main focus here is on passengers right now to start off with. And I like that we have this sort of a phased approach to our missions. So anyway, first we must connect Monroeville to the rail network and make sure that the workers find their way there. Build one passenger station in Monroeville and another in Pittsburgh Central and have a passenger train commute between the cities. Also set up lines with horse-drawn carriages in both places so that passengers can reach the city from the station and of course vice versa. So we can get a medal here as well and I believe that has to do with the amount of passengers. Uh, just see, so obviously it's all cleared now. Full to capacity. Ensure that the train to Monroeville transports at least 70 passengers at once. So already from 
the start we know that we have to make the train big enough to accommodate 70 passengers. So if you are playing these uh, missions, do pay attention to the uh, fine print as they say. But I really, oh, I'm, I'm so enjoying this game. Anyway, there we see the circle of course of Monroval. There's no other towns on this particular mission map. These are all part of Pittsburgh. So if we just have a quick look here, now I'm not sure which way would be north and south in real life, but uh, we just pretend that's north. Well, it's obvious the towns are named that way, so let's keep it like this perhaps. That slipped my mind for a second, but anyway. So we have Pittsburgh Central here, so that's the biggest part of Pittsburgh. Uh, if we can actually bring up the uh, figures here, we see the population. So uh, Monroeville is the biggest single population center. Of course, Pittsburgh altogether is much bigger. Then Pittsburgh North Shore, actually, it's uh, something new I'm learning right now. Then Central, then South Side, and then Eastern. So Eastern is the smallest. That's interesting. Oh, so it does pay to expand to the other parts very quickly. Now, planning is very important in any kind of a game like this, tycoon sort of a game. So, I must ask myself, is it going to be worth it to connect Central and these other two with trains? And I don't think so. It has to be with stagecoaches. I don't think a train station would really be warranted here. So if we have one train station for Pittsburgh Central, like they ask us, we can have just that one passenger connection and then stagecoaches for all the rest. Now Pittsburgh Central uh, leaves us with a few options. Let me just have a look at the station again. This can just be a dead end station again, terminal station there. And we have two tracks. I always like to have this with uh, a passenger line like this. And we know it's going to carry a lot of people because the cities involved are quite large, but they also said we must carry at least 70. Then the platform length, I still think 160 meters is fine. And another street connection, probably not necessary. Let's just see what it changes. Okay, so that the connections are basically further down the track there. But no, let's turn that off for now. So, we have a few choices, I think, if we just turn the gradient on again. This one is an obvious one, and this is where I built before. Since it's very central, obviously, but then you do have the expense of the bridge that must go across here and there, so you'll have two bridges. Maybe if we put it here instead, on the bottom, let's just see, something like here, but then we'll have to take out a house there, perhaps. That certainly covers... Pittsburgh Central, so let's do that. Now just turn it like that. One building for 200,000. Going once, going twice. There we go. I think it's good. It's better than before with all the bridges. And then we can just have a straight line going to Monroeville. So we only have to decide where this one must go. And since we anyway have to use, use uh, you know, intra-city coaches to get to and from the station it doesn't really matter where we put the passenger station so uh, there we go so again two tracks I think here is clear so let's just build it here we see the layout here there is a bit of a hill so we're gonna have to go around that come down here and then either somewhere up there or down here Now there we could fit it in perhaps, or just here. Let's just put it here. I like this spot for it. There we go. Nice and even terrain at least. And then of course all that is left is to connect the uh, railroad. Now you can already tell this mission is different from the first one because we are building these things on paused. So uh, they've taken off those training wheels if you want to look at it like that hmm, let's just see now that would mean wait cancel this one I just want to see that's 102 meters and then we go up so this is a bit of a downhill so it would be better to sort of curve there let's try that it's 
still keeping the speed as high as possible does seem good. Now, the contour line shows us that if we want to stay on this level, we're going to have to cross here actually. So if we go down here and then back, we're going to change too much. So let me not curve like this. There we go. And then we just cross there. I always like to check the crossings are there at least nice and level so we don't get some strange dips and things. There we go. It looks nice. Then through the forest there. It should make for a nice uh, scenic route. It still pays to build the uh, tracks in shorter sections just because there will of course be some uneven terrain. Let's keep it above 90 there. Now that one was the track on the bottom so this will be this one here. So I just want to keep them together. So those must now meet up somewhere. Just see. So the town can still expand here. There's lots of room. And how does that look? Hmm. Not as great as I wanted to be honest. Let me actually delete this. That's much better. I don't want to drop into the 70s there. So now I am just wanting to do a bit of landscaping here. This will cost money but I just don't want this uh, imprint. You can just smooth it. $8,000 is not a huge amount. There we go. Looks a bit nicer there. So now I want to complete the other route because this will be a big money maker for us. And also you don't need to have played the mission to know that. I mean one of the medals does say you have to get 70 people on one train. So that will imply a big demand. There we go. So this one I want to have a, a two-way system going and I don't know it's not really necessary but I think it will just allow us a bit more flexibility so let me just do what I did in my train fever campaign or not really a campaign but a series just say again the trains must always travel on the right side and they must come straight into the station and then leave going onto the opposite track so that means we just need to have one of these signals here just something like that in case there is a train in the station already. But I don't think we'll have that much uh, traffic. And then the same thing again. Signal again. Somewhere there. And then of course some signals just along the pathway in case there's, let's say there's three trains on this uh, system here. Then obviously somewhere the one will have to wait at the signal and that just gives us more flexibility. Just getting this right is actually very important for financing the rest of our mission. Here we go, I think that will be more than enough. So if we just look at our finances again, you see we are 5 million in debt again. So even though our transcontinental venture was a success, to undertake this particular mission we still have to take out some debt so obviously that will mean some loan repayments but if we have a successful passenger line I think we can pay for ourselves. So all that's missing now is uh, of course the connection here to the depot so let me put that one here. Actually can I put it maybe on the other side so when the trains leave it they can just come right into the Pittsburgh here. Something like that. And then just the actual building now. Uh oh, might have made a mistake here. No, I definitely don't want to demolish anything. So I think I'm going to try and just turn this track a little. Let's try again. There we go. Don't have to break down anybody's house. 
So one more thing I have to do is just put the signal here, just when the trains are coming out from there, we can have them wait if there's someone here, and I can just let the clock run. So put up the uh, line here, we'll start of course in the center of Pittsburgh and then go to Monroeville. Let's pick a nice color for this line. Let's say a nice blue. Let's say a very dark blue. Yes, that'll, that'll do. See if the track is following the instructions. Yes, it is. Perfect. So I don't want them to clash anywhere. And of course, I want to name it. So this will be Pittsburgh to Monroeville. Perfect. And then let me actually pause again. So right now we won't get that much demand because if you see the highlighted area and this feature I really love, this shows you how far the people will be willing to walk really. And obviously if we want to have passengers we have to look at where the people are concentrated and it's a bit, okay the most of it is actually covered here but this central part here will not be. So for that purpose I think let's actually just expand and of course people could come from the businesses as well not just out of their residences but i do think that is how it mostly works let's just see so we will miss out too much there okay let's build up a bus network or a stagecoach network first we can have them stop somewhere right there that's nice and that covers a relatively large area here then okay i want to see the overlays now, let me think actually. Two choices now. We can continue this bus route throughout Pittsburgh Central and possibly Eastern, so this sort of conglomeration here. So all the way around, or we can just have it go to Pittsburgh Central and then have another passenger coach line that travels all around. I think that might actually be better. Let's do that. I didn't do this before, so that would be an interesting little experiment. So since this is Pittsburgh Central, the commercial district, I'll just put that one there. So that will be one line. So now we want to cover all of the uh, houses and so on. So let's see, when it leaves here, it can stop down by these houses. Then it can go to Pittsburgh Eastern Central part then up to these houses. So I do, you know, duplicate because this station or stop covers this whole area, but I still put another one sort of overlapping with that area so people don't have to walk that far. Then one here in the industrial section, perhaps. Then it comes down here somewhere. And then, let's see, now it's going back to Pittsburgh Central. Put one there. Definitely by this housing development. One there. Just stop here so this street is also covered. And... There. I think that does. It's a bit of a complicated... Uh, pathway but I think it will work out so let me just create the main coach service here uh, yellow is fine for this one so this will be Pittsburgh Central and Eastern okay we can't put the whole word there so I'll just say Pittsburgh Central and East then we start out uh, we close that here in the center then we go Okay, how does the path go now? I think we said up here next, if I'm not mistaken. Then up here, here. I think so. Then it stops there, but not at the station. I want a separate dedicated line for that. Otherwise, people will get on this coach line and sit on it the whole time and only get off at the station blocking people who just want to use it for their work commute. Down there, there and there. 
Now, did I do that correctly? Yes, I think so. I don't see any strange shapes there. And I can close that one. Okay, now, one last one. And the setup does take a bit of time, but it's so worth it in the end. So that goes from Grange Road to Park Road, so it's a dedicated station line. Of course, some people will just walk straight to the station, but that's fine. So this one I will call... The Pittsburgh Station Express. Perfect. And then we just need the uh, depot for the vehicles. And I like to build these in the industrial areas. Let's say back here somewhere. Unfortunately, a bit of the forest must be sacrificed again. No, I don't like it. It has too much slope there. Just there. Okay. So, the vehicles. Stagecoach and the color of the lines. I still like to copy the line uh, color onto the vehicles. It It's a nice touch, I think. So this one is the big one for the whole of Pittsburgh Central and East. So I think at least 20. Uh, it's a lot, but 20 will do. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll actually need more, I think. But let's start with 20. Then for the, the green one now. Uh, I think it's more or less green like that. So let's put 5 onto the uh, Station Express. Awesome! Now let that just run and sort of start figuring out what to do and we can get the train moving as well. And then on the way to Monroeville I'll build the coaches there as well. So we've got three choices of locomotive and uh, of course they get exceedingly expensive as we go down the list. So we start with Baldwin six wheels, that's 172,000. Uh, the General and then the Consolidation, of course, that very famous locomotive. But it's 60 kilometers an hour. I think, yes, the costs for the running costs are actually a lot. It's more than double the uh, General for 20 kilometers an hour extra. Is it worth it? No, I think it's not. Let's go with the General. And what color is this line again? Let me just have a look. Oh, it's the dark blue. So let's just copy that. Purchase that one. And then we have the passenger car or the clear story passenger car. So the difference is... Okay, our speed limit will be 45. So it doesn't help buying the clear story one. It's 80 kilometers an hour. So let's go with the normal Pullman wagon. That one can only carry two less. So it's not really a big dif difference there. So remember, we must have at least a capacity of 70. And then set line, and there we go. And also the thing that I like here, when you put together your consist, it actually tells you the length of the train. So you know the standard sort of default platforms are 160 meters. So you can easily tell if you uh, are going to exceed that which is a very nice touch. If we just look again there, you see 160. Uh, of course, you can change that, but then you must just remember. Oh, very nice. I like this sort of navy blue, royal blue. Definitely a fancy line for a, a new time in history. So 1880. Let me just pause quickly. Actually, I don't have to pause, but 1880, so our, one of our things said we must convince all the districts by 1890, so that's 10 years. After that, it, there's no sort of closing date for the mission, but that part of the mission must be done by 1890, so 10 years, not a lot of time again. In the meantime, I can just put up the line here in Monroeville, so again, a bit of a setup, but... It is worth it. It will make all the difference to our business. And I think again, the same sort of a model, a dedicated station line. Let's say it goes from there so the people don't have to cross the road to somewhere there. I'm going to pause it because the people get deleted when you place these buildings. And if I keep doing it, obviously it's going to keep deleting them. And uh, I don't know what the effect is. I guess they just jump back home. 
and obviously that sort of sets their journeys back a little anyway so that line is now finished so now we are on a new line and this one will leave here and just go down to the end of the street sort of then it's going to go to the left and again the buildings are the guide so put it where the buildings are the brightest color it still covers all of this area but it just makes it more accessible for the majority of the people so again here same thing most people live in these few buildings you can change the view to land value as well which i really like but for the layouts it, it makes more sense to do this so that one does cover this sort of extension it's almost like a suburban area but then we just want to put it here i guess it is worth to just sort of no it's not this area they must just walk there then let's see one in the middle there somewhere and then it goes down there and back to the center so it's not a very huge town but still this will make it at least a bit more accessible maybe i can just have one more there since it's very bright there great so now just the line manager again and we get this sort of bright green color for monroeville so i'll keep that why not and we start there that one this one part through the passengers down there there and then it turns around back to church lane excellent so this I'll just call Monroeville Express or no this shouldn't be Express just Monroeville coach and then the last line so this will be the last setup before we actually get to the action so this has this nice turquoise blue and that goes from the center of town to the station and this will be the Monroeville Station Express just say xp can't fit the whole word in there but that's fine and i'll just let the clock run while i put the depot here so this is what i was meaning when i said in the last episode if you uh, expect a really quick playthrough it's not going to happen on this channel i take my time with things but you know maybe if you have a lot of stress in your life and you just want to relax you can just come here to this channel and uh, unwind anyway so let's take again 15 maybe is that too much maybe just 10 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so this will be for Monroeville and five for the station because obviously we'll have the same number of passengers getting off here that get on on the other side that's that turquoise blue one two three four five so the only challenge with the color really is if you add more see there i didn't even look at the name i just looked at the color if you replace your vehicles automatically you must just remember to also indicate that they must have the same color or if you just buy it automatically or uh, not automatically manually you must also just remember the color that you used so this is very interesting a neon green paint for 1880 uh, certainly people will see this stagecoach and it will stick out in their mind and uh, it's a good marketing tool i think if you want to take the stagecoach just look out for that bright green thing coming down the road and we have our first customers there we go so they will always wait on this pass a platform because even if we have more than one train it will always just pull down this line so it wasn't actually necessary to put the second platform up here but if we had more cities then we could use that one perhaps already we're going to have quite a large number of people see the scale of the cities is also different from train fever it does look much bigger and of course the numbers are much bigger so it feels much more like a real city now we should start seeing passengers there we go so it's definitely working to finish this first part of the mission we just have to load a hundred people they don't actually say that here 
but it's Nothing only when... more stands in the way of the operation of the electric factory in Monroeville. We should help George Westinghouse to get production rolling. Growth, growth, and more growth is the motto. Only once production is running smoothly will our friend have the means to make the decisive breakthrough in his research into alternating current. And that's absolutely in our interest, as Westinghouse's profit is also our profit. Absolutely. So just saying there, you can see the hundred that we have to move. But as soon as our first passengers were moved there, the second part of the mission activated. So Westinghouse Machine Factory must start production now. And you can see we have a quota of 10. So we have to at least make 10 machines to get to the next uh, stop on our list here. To manufacture machines, Westinghouse's factory requires steel and planks. Steel is made in the steelworks from coal and iron, and planks in the lumber mill from logs. The buyers of machines are the industrial districts in the cities, very important. Use the land use overlay to find out where the industrial districts of the cities are located, and of course we've done that already, but again that's part of the them easing you into the whole game, you know, bit of a tutorial built into the missions. So you see industrial here is now yellow. I like the color scheme in this one uh, much more than Train Fever because there we had the red as well and yellow was leisure. So you see definitely in Pittsburgh, the central part here, this is the main customer for uh, machines. If we just click on one, we can, can we tell how many it will need? No. Details? No. Unfortunately, we don't know how many machines they would ask for but because it's a bigger business we know this is where more demand will be than say one of these dull yellow ones but of course the more we can cover the better and that gives us now a bit of a bit of a choice to make uh, obvious first site for selling the machines will be in Monroeville itself so I think that once we do that we can think about Pittsburgh because we only have to make 10 to start off with but again the mission is telling you that if you want to make money just ramp that up because after the mission requirement of 10 machines is done of course the production line will still make profit and the machine factory is here so it's just outside Monroeville you can see Ah, there we go, 70 passengers already, so very, very popular, wow. And look at that, the train is leaving and there's not enough, look at that, we can literally run another train here now and it will still not have enough capacity to meet all of the demand. So that's the first priority once we get enough money. Then this is, of course, the destination for the steel and the planks, and the steel works is very close. So I think actually a good option will be to take the steel by wagon to the steelworks. So this is our railroad's final destination unless eventually we want to take the machines also by rail to Pittsburgh. But that's for another time, I think. Let's just get the passenger line up and then uh, I think that will already probably be the end of this episode because uh, time is going so fast. So let's just zip down the line to Pittsburgh Central and uh, see if we've got enough money then for another train. I like the finance uh, bars here as well. It's a very nice visual way of keeping track of what's profitable or not. Look at that. Amazing. Good profits for us. Let's just see now. Where is this uh, depot? Buy train... Definitely also use the general. Also dark blue. And how many 70 passengers? So one, wait, I just want to see that. Two, three, four, five. The money is slipping uh, through our fingers, people. We'll soon be bankrupt. But if we're prepared to grovel on our hands and knees, our financiers will grant us a bridge loan. I love how eager he sounds, let's grovel on our hands and knees, but I think we can avoid that for now. We have the whole 70 passenger train, so we just had enough money there. Uh oh, I shouldn't have pressed that, but luckily we didn't have enough. So let me close this and just wait until the train reaches its destination. They will space themselves out, of course, but it will just help us if I can more or less help the timing. Just 
just before. Okay, now, because it still has to get out of the depot. There we go. So this will be a sound financial ground for the future. I think our coaches will make us money. Of course, they don't make much money per coach or per trip. It's only a few hundred dollars, but over time it compounds, absolutely. And look at that. The train has just left and it still has people remaining on the platform. Very, very interesting. So theoretically, we can add another one as well. Actually, not just theoretically, practically. Look at this. This is crazy. I didn't even see this in my last mission that one time I played this particular mission before. I didn't get this much demand. I think it's because of the way that the coach lines are set up. 177. We can run two more trains here. Of course, I can make very long trains, but for this locomotive, I think five will be just fine. Luckily, the line is very smooth. There's not enough sharp curves to really slow it down from its 40s. So around 40 kilometers would be fine. And this trip still doesn't take a long time. Let's see. Pittsburgh to Monroeville, five minutes. So five minutes until a train stops at your station. So one will take 10 minutes so that round trip is 10 minutes very quick but the demand is so amazing obviously here it's not as much but I think we can address that once the coach lines or maybe the tram line that will actually be better from North Shore and South Side link up to Central because then those people can also take the bus to the station and uh, get on the train just see how long have I been rambling. I think that should be enough for this episode. So let me just pause here. And uh, if you want to see more, then please join me in the next episode. And thank you for watching. And do go and play Transport Fever. It's worth it. And I'm not being paid to say that, of course. I'm just saying it because I mean it. So there we go. Have a fantastic day.